Hi, I'm Robert, and I want to share something really important with you today. Uh, that's God's grand narrative story, something that is being written out still to this day, and something that started at the beginning of the world. Now, it's a long story, so let me, let me jump right in. Like I said, the beginning of the world. God created it. Take a look around. The plants, the air that you breathe, the land, the sea, the animals, and most importantly, us. God created us differently than all the rest. He created us in his image. He created us to live a life that is collaborative with his. He wanted a relationship with us. And that is the most important thing, that when God created us, he wanted that relationship, and he wanted it for eternity. And God gave us the ability to rule over the animals and to care for the land. But he told us not to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And that's exactly what Adam and Eve did. <laughs> they rebelled against God and they ate it. And then they knew that they were sinful because of this rebellion. And that rebellion, that sin, needed to be punished. So that punishment was God moved them from Eden so that they would not live forever. And then also the land was hard to be labored and there were thorns and thistles and weeds that grew. And then on top of that, the woman had pains in childbirth. So that sin had to be punished because we could not live forever separated from God. And God didn't want that either. He didn't want to be eternally separated from us because he loved us that much. He wanted to be in a collaborative life with us. So he knew he had to do something and that something was a promise slash covenant with a man named Abraham. That promise and covenant was one, for him to have descendants as numerous as the stars, and two, for a Messiah to come and to save us from our sin and to restore that broken relationship that we had with God. Now something special here happened because normally a covenant takes a commitment from both parties one from Abraham, one from God, but God did something special. He himself took on both responsibilities. And so there was no way that this promise was not going to come true. There was no way that this covenant, this plan was not going to come true. But even with this promised covenant, we continued as humans to sin and to rebel against God. And so God had to send messengers. He had to send prophets to the nations to remind them just exactly what was promised, and that was a Messiah, a king that was coming to restore the relationship that was broken. And not only did they tell of the coming king, they told of the coming kingdom and all that it entailed, and they told just exactly how this Messiah was going to come, to look forward to the future, to give hope to the, the Israelites, to give hope to the people, and eventually to the Gentiles. It was finally time. God had chosen his instrument, a virgin named Mary, who had never known a man and yet conceived a baby by the power of the Holy Spirit. And that baby was Jesus Christ, the Son of God, Emmanuel, the Messiah, the one who was to save us from all our sins, the one who was prophesied about. And here he was, born of a human, but also fully God because he was born of the Holy Spirit as well. And so his deity was not something that was 50-50. It was 100% human and 100% God. He was 100% human because he loved us that much. He loved us so much, he saw equality with us and did not want to be seen as too high. And yet he was fully God and deserves all glory and all honor. Glory and honor? Well, yeah, if you take a look at his life, if you read about it in the Bible, you'll see all the miraculous things, the unexplainable things that he had done throughout his life, right? He made the blind see. He allowed the lame to walk. He healed people of leprosy. He even raised a man from the dead. But here's the thing. None of those were exactly his mission. Yes, they were a part of his mission, but his mission was to save the lost, to seek redemption for the sin that we had in our hearts. Because every time he healed someone physically, he would heal them 
spiritually. He would heal their hearts because he knew it wasn't about our outer appearance, but our inner appearance. Our relationship with God with, with God was more important than whatever we were doing here on this earth. It's funny to talk about someone's death as being the climax of the story. It should be the end, right? But no, not with Jesus. Jesus didn't stay dead. His death was for our sin. His death was because of our rebellion, our separation from God. As he had his arms stretched out on the cross, it was in love. It was in love because he knew that we would never be able to find our way back to him without him. And that's why going back to the covenant, God took on both parts of the covenant. He didn't leave anything up to us because he knew we would never be able to do it. And so Jesus steps in our place. He is the reason that we can have a relationship with God. Jesus' death is the reason that we can find forgiveness for our sins. Had Jesus stayed dead, then his sacrifice would have not been enough to atone for our sins. But because he was raised to life again, that means that we truly know that we can believe and have faith that what he did on the cross, dying and resurrecting, we are forgiven from our sin, from our past sin, from our future sin. But we must repent. We must ask God in repentance and say, God, I am sorry for what I have done. Help me to walk in the way that you desire. Help me to do your will. I will follow you. If we are to follow Jesus, if we are to follow God, then we have to learn his words. We have to know what his will is for our life. And the best way to do that is to read the Bible because that is his word. It's living and it is active. It is not just some words on a page. If you need encouragement, it's there. If you need wisdom, it's there. It is timeless. I say the Bible is God's cheat sheet for life, right? If you're taking a test and you need the answers, this is it. Life is a test, and the Bible is our answers. And so as God ascended, he left us with one last thing. He left us with, follow me, and as you follow me, make disciples. Have others follow me. Tell others of who I am, what my mission is, and how much I love them, because I want a relationship with them. So as we look at the grand narrative of scripture, we have to ask ourselves, what do we believe? Do we believe that God created everything around us? Do we believe that Jesus was born fully human and fully God? Do we believe what he did on the earth? Do we believe that he died for our sins and raised from the dead so that we can be forgiven and find forgiveness in a relationship with God once again? Do you believe that God did all that because he loves you and cares about you? Because it's true. And when he returns, he's coming to redeem those souls. He's coming to say, you are my chosen. And the chosen is anyone who believes. It's not a specific group or culture or nation. It's for everyone. This gift, this free gift of uh, salvation is for everyone. So I ask you again, what do you believe? Do you believe in the grand narrative story of God?